Hello, my name is Dennis Dvorak, and along with my wife Linda, we're going to give you a tour of New Prague's Centennial Cabin and Shed and give you a glimpse into New Prague's historical past. Welcome to our 1870s cabin in the park. And we're starting at this side with our sauerkraut cutter. This is a piece of equipment. The box here with the blades would sit over a big crock. The part that you'd sit on would rest on a chair to be supported. Sauerkraut was an important part of the diet for the early settlers and pioneers. It provided ascorbic acid, which was essential to life. And this is what we would call the vacuum cleaner of the time. When the rugs needed to be cleaned, they were hung on a line outside and whacked with the rug beater to get out all the grime. Our table has a lot of the cooking tools that we needed to get a meal on the table. We have plates. Our wooden bowl serves several purposes. Nuts could be chopped for a meal. And if we we're making butter and needed to wash the butter to get the whey out, we would put the mass in here, add the water, and use this tool to work out the way and keep pouring that off and putting on fresh water till the butter was ready to be put into our fancy butter press, pushed in here, and then when it would come out, it would have be impressed with this nice hand carved pattern. Lighting in our cabin was provided by kerosene lamps, which you can see around, around the room, and by candles. Light was at a premium, and life at this time ended when the sun went down. So people would not have stayed up late, and they would be up in the morning when the, when the sun rises. Now we have a coffee grinder here. Coffee was an important item at the time. We have tools of the period. We have an apple core. Apples were important at, at um, especially at harvest time, to provide food or to make cider. Probably even a more important thing at that time. We have here a dry sink. A dry sink was called that because there is a depression down, and when you were washing dishes, you could use that, and if the water splashed off, it wouldn't run on the floor. It would stay inside here. Usually this would have been tin lined to catch the water dripping. And here's our cupboard. We have a lot of nice dishes stored in here. This was pretty fancy for the time period to have all these wonderful tools, dishes, and platters. The heart of our kitchen is the wood stove. This was essential for keeping the room warm and to provide meals. Meals had to be cooked year round, so even if it were a hot summer day, the stove was on. So to season our, our cooking, we'd want to use herbs to flavor our foods. And we would have picked these when they were ripe and have them hanging here close at hand so they're ready to be added to our, our food that we're cooking on our wooden stove, wood burning stove. We have a wood box full of wood for that. 
Everything was very labor intensive. The wood had to have been hauled in. The water would have, have to have been hauled in. And the day was full of all these chores. The children in the family would have been hauling the wood in. That would have been one of their chores. The water would also have been, there would have been a well or a source of water outside that would have helped us with that task. We have all our tools hanging on the wall to make our cooking process much easier. We have funnels and baking equipment. We have also uh, corn hanging over here. That was the means the corn would have been hung on the racks in fall when it ripened and the best ears would have been put on this and in spring that corn would have been shelled and used for planting in spring. Very essential to keep the propagation going. We have a basket here to gather apples. Apples would at this time have been used primarily for juice making so uh, to have something flavorful to, to drink. Oh, I forgot one item over here I wanted to share with you. This is what we would have whipped our eggs or our cream for whipped cream. And this little wooden tool would have been put in here and then spun around to whip our mixture. Pretty handy and no electricity required. We have an oxen yoke here. Well the family would have gotten to the cabin by wagon pulled by the oxen and on one of the items they would have had on the wagon was their bed. We have a rope bed here. Now this comes apart in sections, the head, the foot, and the sidebars. And the ropes are held in place by the pegs that are on the sideboards, the head and the foot. The ropes are woven in a certain pattern, not just willy-nilly, but in a certain way. Then uh, the mattress would have been put on top of it, and life was good. That is, until the ropes started stretching and the bed, the people in the bed would have sagged together. So what they wanted to do was refresh the bed. So they pulled the mattress back and they got the rope bed key. And there's a little hole here and put that peg into it and started turning. And when they did that, this board would have turned and in turn all the ropes on all the sides would have tightened. Very ingenious. And when it was all tight and handy again and the mattress was stretched out, the bed was comfortable. So now when we say sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite, you know where that saying came from. At night, You've noticed in our cabin we have no bathroom, so we have to use the outdoor facilities, an outhouse. But at night, if we needed to use those facilities, it was kind of dark and scary outside. So we would use a chamber pot. In the morning, that would have to have been taken out and emptied in the outhouse. We have a baby cradle here. Now this has a little roping across the top. We, uh, we understand that that was to keep the baby safe so that baby would not fall out of the cradle, perhaps at night. Winter nights in a log cabin were pretty chilly. So we had a stone here um, that would be warmed on the wood burning stove and then place between the sheets and the blankets to keep the toes warm of all the people. This would have been a jacket that would have been put over the 
clothes going to church on Sunday. And on the floor, we have what's called barn shoes. These are wooden shoes that would have been used to go out and do all the chores that needed to be done. Fancy shoes were very special. They were kept for going to church or shopping in town, but all the other times you wouldn't want to get your shoes soiled and you would use the barn shoes. We also have no closets to store our clothes, but we do have trunks. And the trunks that we have in our cabin have round tops. These were really the, the type of trunks we would want to come from Europe to America. And that is because if it had a round top, another trunk could not be placed on top of it. So when they were, the trunks were loaded on the ships, the trunks that had flat tops were the ones on the bottom and the trunks were stacked. The ones that were with the rounded tops were the first trunks to come off when they made dock. So that's why they were valuable. In them were stored all their clothes, the extra bedding, the pillows, that sort of stuff. We have rocking chairs here, a rocking chair here, and our desk where we could write letters to family at home. We have a spinning wheel. They would have raised sheep, cut the, the wool and washed and carted it, and then wrapped it on the spinning wheel. And when that was done, they would put it onto the yarn winder and it was ready to be knit into socks and other clothing. Welcome to the shed, which is part of the history of the log cabin, uh, log house, and also the community, both uh, New Prague and in the rural community. Uh, there were two distinct groups, and the majority of the first immigrants that came to New Prague were farmers. They worked with their hands and tilled the soil and cleared the woods that we're standing in the part of the big woods, where they established their homes and their livelihood for themselves and future generations. All the tools on this side of the room, in this corner, are farm-related tools. They were related to the, the work and the livelihood of the farms. And as an example, the flail, which was used to beat the wheat and remove the shaft from the wheat, the plow, which was used to till the earth for planting and cultivating. The wolf trap, which was used to capture the critters that harass the animals on the farm. And remember that during this time, they either had oxen or they had workhorses. The oxen were brought in first as they walked from Henderson or Belle Plain or Shakopee into the interior of the big woods, which New Prague is part of. The oxen and the plow were absolutely essential at the beginning. They were strong, sturdy animals. And like the horse, as the hoofs walked the fields, they cultivated the fields with their hoofs. They dropped manure, which fertilized them. And then as they worked the soil, they almost inadvertently planted the seed. There are four photographs on the wall which talk to the most important event on a farm during the year, and that was the harvesting. And both men and women took part in this process, whereas the woman, was, not, was the, her domain was essentially the home. The, for the men and for the boys, the farm work was essentially the domain of, for them. However, they joined together 
at the threshing and helped one another. So, some, oftentimes this was a family event, bringing extended family, uncles and aunts and cousins, and even beyond that point, to the farm to assist in the threshing. It was very labor intensive. And the women of the house, the women of the home, were responsible for providing the food. So they were preparing meals often five, six times a day. Uh, at sunrise, at mid-morning, at noon, at mid-afternoon, the evening meal, and of course, there were chores that needed to be done as the sun was setting, and so more food was prepared. And everything had to be prepared in the home and, um, and prepared by hand. So there was no fast food at this time to feed the workers. And uh, the, all the, the, once the crops had been reaped and harvested from the field, then in terms of flour, the, the, for milling flour, the wheat was brought to the New Prague Mill. And so a photograph here on the wall gives an idea of what the New Prague flour mill looked like at the turn of the century, the turn of 1900, between 1900 and 1925. Above hangs the mill, the millstone, which in this particular case, as time advanced, ended up being fabricated from metal. This ground the wheat into a flour. And as we progress, we see more farm tools. We have bale, the bale cutters that were used by the men of the family to cut bales for the feeding. The device, very primitive device, used to shell corn. The corn planter. And above us is the cradle scythe. The scythe was necessary for cutting the, the wheat. And the cradle, the wooden portion, was used to bring the wheat and helped to create a stack of wheat. And that's pictured in this photograph on the wall here, where you see the farm, um, both men, women and the men are gathering the wheat from the ground, bringing it together in a grouping to be placed in a stack. After the wheat was brought to the mill and ground into flour, there was also corn and other grains, and they were brought to the feed mill. The field, feed mill was a very active place in New Prague, and it was the place where the corn was ground into feed for feeding both livestock and for poultry. And um, the scale here came from the Schoeniger feed mill, and that, along with other feed mills, was a gathering spot, spot for farmers. They could gather there, they could exchange stories, discuss the weather and the, and the growing conditions and the harvesting, and so it was the center of activity. As you probably gather by now, life on the farm or in the rural areas was very labor intensive. And the more hands you had available, the more work could be done and more accomplished in the process. Moving along, every horse had to have had to be shooed. And so the blacksmith was an essential part of the cycle of life in the rural areas. The plow had to be sharpened in the spring of the year, and the horses had to be have new shoes put on. One of the things that amazes me is that in talking to members of the community, and older members that is, that once school ended, and being the schools were both on on the north and side of May Street, they were the center of activity for kids to gather, especially boys after school. They would run down to the blacksmith shop, they could hear the metal hitting the anvil, and all of the men in the blacksmith shop exchanging stories. It was a place where stories were exchanged, new stories were being created. The blacksmith also was responsible for a myriad of other things. He could fashion door hooks, he could repair sleighs, he could repair anything that was required to, uh, with the material of metal. They, they fabricated everything from scratch. And again, a very labor intensive occupation. The horseshoes on the wall are of various types of horses. The small pony that you might have as a pet to the horse that you might ride up and down Main Street, or to the workhorse horseshoes that were required that had even spikes on 
that were required in the winter when the ice formed on the roads. Blacksmith shop also was responsible for making wagon parts and sleigh parts, and they're displayed on the wall. One thing that amazes me and is interesting is the role of women in, this, in the rural areas as well as the community of New Prague. And remember, the, the rural areas were very much tied to the core of the city of New Prague. They, the city and the shopkeepers were dependent upon the rural community, and the com city community was dependent on the rural community, bringing I, the wheat in to be made into flour, their animals in to be uh, reshoed, and the, they also brought the milk into the community for the creamery. So both were totally reliant on one another. Sometimes life took a left turn. As an example, Mrs. Bollinger's husband died and had two sons to raise. And so she decided, thought to herself, how can I support my family? And so she reinvented herself making cigars. And cigars were the predominant uh, pastime for the men of the community. They would gather, smoke cigars at the, the saloons. They, it was very aromatic, and it, you could immediately, it generated kind of uh, a sense of socialization. They, they smoked cigars together, and they drank pivo, the beer, together. Mrs. Bollinger was able to raise both of her sons. Here is her shop on Main Street, across from the New Prague Times. And she continued on, on this process until the boys, her sons, decided to go into the creamery business and ended up making wonderful ice cream sold across from St. Wenceslaus Church. By the way, I forgot to mention that the tobacco was raised in the area around New Prague. The tobacco was cut at the optimum time of the year. It was brought to Mrs. Bollinger as an example. She would, they would dry it in a, a type of a barn that had a lot of openings so that the air could circulate. When at the appropriate time was brought to her shop, she cut the tobacco and then she shaped it and formed it into cigars and then inserted them in the cigar molds hanging below her photograph for them to cure and then once they were dried and appropriate for smoking, then they were sold to customers. She had to have a license to do this. And if you examine her, the, and, and next to her, one of her boys, and to the left, you can see all the cigar bo boxes stacked on one another. The business that I often think of next is the harness maker. The harness maker repaired the leather uh, bridles that were required for the horses. And so there are two horse collars hanging on the wall here from Meshkan's harness shop. And his harness shop was also the site of one of the first wells that were dug in the 1873. It provided the children who went to a log school behind what was, what was then Topka's Hall. And that well was also used as a for firemen to dip their buckets and hoses in once there was, if there was a fire on along Main Street and elsewhere. The harness bench was where the, man, the men sat in the harness shop. And here you see Mr. Meshkan in his uh, harness shop, seated on this same harness bench, repairing harnesses. They also helped to repair shoes, if there was anything that dealt with leather. Although there were shoe, they also kind of doubled as shoemakers. So above you see the, the gentleman here in his, his uh, cobbler shop. And we also see items that were related to the needs of farmers. Meat was a very important part of the diet of the community. Behind me is a meat rack that would have been found in every butcher shop. On the meat rack were hung uh, bologna, hams, uh, sausages, anything that was smoked. And the smoking of meat was essential during this time because there was no refrigeration. Other than blocks of ice, they were cut on the lakes and brought 
into, brought into town and put into ice houses. But the smoking of meat is a tradition that started in, in Europe and it, it came to the rural areas and into New Prague, which was famous for making sausages of various types. On the rack are different tools as well. The harness shop made the collars for the horses. You could go to the harness shop on the blacksmith to buy bells to put on your sleighs to warn other sleighs that you were coming or pedestrians that you were coming to alert them. And the sound of the bells was not, was not there for just a special music to be provided, but it was provided as a, a signal that a sleigh was coming the opposite direction. On the meat rack, you see the cleaver, the meat saw, and the sharpening stone for the saw. Other items on the meat rack as a poppy seed grinder, and poppy seed was essential for the rural Bohemian community to uh, use in their pastries, Kolachki as an example. The corker, which was in the grocery store, which was used to cork the jugs of vinegar, and uh, the sharpening stone for the sai is also hanging from the meat rack. Every shop in along Main Street, every blacksmith shop, every harness shop, had to be heated in the wintertime. Below me is an example of an iron stove that would have been used in a shop. Notice it has only one hole for inserting the kindling, whereas the stove that you saw in the log house had four burners and was used for cooking. This would have been just as a shop stove. So there are many occupations that people had that didn't require a special building for them to set up a business. Mrs. Bollinger could certainly have made cigars at home and thereby be called having a cottage industry. There were many cigar factories in New Prague that were located in homes. Once it, removed, once it gets on the main street, it's no longer a cottage industry. The, the Pika family is spinning wool in their kitchen. And if they were selling that, that would be considered a cottage industry. Mrs. Pika is spinning wool on her spinning wheel. It's a very rare photograph. Hanging next to it are, it's, it's flax. Flax is produ it produces linen. Now, flax was especially um, common in Scandinavian communities. In the Bohemian communities, people raised sheep in the wool. The wool was essential because they used spun wool to knit mittens and to knit socks and to knit sweaters. And it was a product that they came from the farm, another farm-related industry. And um, it was essential during the winter months, as you know, because winter in Minnesota is very cold. The device hanging on the wall that has the spikes on it is a, is a hatchel. And that was used to comb the, the linen. The linen, the flax hanging on the wall is processed by being beaten and rinsed and then into kind of a rough fiber. That fiber then is combed to remove the, the elements from the fiber that is no longer needed. And then hanging on the wall next to the photograph of Mrs. Pika spinning wool is a skein of flax. Now, the wool would have been done the same thing, the same way. The wooden device underneath it is a yarn winder. Once it's been spun, that is, into a, 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 a fiber that can be used in process for knitting, it is put on the yarn winder to help it get into the skein form. So you might have your grandmother holding your arms in this position, winding the yarn around your arms, and then she would tie it, making it easier for her to knit later. A popular pastime with the citizens of New Prague, especially the men, was visiting the saloons that lined Main Street. In fact, there were saloons out in the middle of the country. Every small town had a saloon where beer was sold. And every community, uh, German or Bohemian, most undoubtedly had a brewery. 
So this was a life in itself. It was a, like the blacksmith shop, it was a place for people to gather. Every grocery store had a bar where beer was sold. The farmers came to town on Sunday and after extending church, they would do their shopping for the week at the local uh, grocery stores. We call them grocery stores, but in essence, they were far more. They sold everything from fabric to needles to buttons to pots and pans. There were anything that was needed for daily life. But the brewery was a kind of a, next to church was the most important place to gather in town. And uh, New Prague had two breweries. In fact, it even had a so soda uh, works. And so the, the non-alcohol consumers could enjoy a sarsaparilla, as it was called at the time. Beer was stored in wooden kegs, and they were taken to the local saloons. There's a photograph of the saloon here up on the wall. And in that photograph, you will see little bowls at the base of the front of the bar. These were spittoons. Like Mrs. Bollinger, who created um, cigars, I don't really know if she got into making chewable tobacco, but chewable tobacco was also very popular. I won't get into the dynamics of it, but at some point you had to get rid of the saliva and the tobacco juice in your mouth after chewing it. So you would spit it into what is called the spittoon. Every hardware store, every saloon, every business along Main Street had spittoons because no one wanted anyone to spit the saliva and the chewable tobacco on the floor. In the wooden box that came from the New Prague Brewery are various bottles from the, from the, the breweries. And uh, above the keg is the photograph of the Minar Brewery, which was located along the, the creek where Mr. Phillips built his first home. And that is behind the tennis courts in New Prague. The safe here at the bottom of the, uh, this ball is from the chocolate factory that was also located along Main Street. So by now you can gather there are many different things happening along the uh, main avenue of New Prague. The Marushka and Rinda chocolate shop is where chocolates were fashioned and sold. And this was very, a very short window um, of existence. It ended uh, in the early 1930s, but because of the international milling in the mill, there were many families that could afford buying expensive chocolates, and they served that part of our community. Above the safe is the, the top is the Dobiho Bakery, and Mr. Dobiho, Frank Dobiho, is pictured behind his display case, which you see against this wall. And Mr. Dobiho's bakery was next door to St. Wenceslaus Church, and he had wood-fired powered ovens in the back where he baked, from which he baked his bread. And the churchgoers at mass could smell that bread being baked on a Sunday morning or a day of mass, any day essentially. And they would run down the hill after mass to be first in line to buy his baked goods. The children that went to St. Wenceslaus Church School would race after school to buy the penny candy that he sold before going home, or they would buy the candy on the way to school, which wasn't the good thing to do, but they did it anyway. Mr. Dobiehall's case here is pictured with many items from New Prague, and many of the items were premiums given to customers, and they would put their name on the plate as a form of advertising. Above the case are three straight images of New Prague. Going from left to right, they're from different periods of time. The one in the middle is pictures the first post office and the New Prague Times office because they were run by the same man where today's Crawford's gas station is located on the corner of First Street South, First Avenue South, excuse me, and Main Street. The horses are pictured out in front 
These were the first mail carriers to the rural areas. Their mail wasn't always delivered to the farms. You had to come into town to pick up your mail. But at this point, around 1895, between 1905 and 1900, then mail was delivered by horse and buggy when the roads were passable. If it was winter and there was too much snow, or in the spring if the, there was mud in the roads, then the mail was not delivered. Music has also been a, has played a very important part in the history of New Prague and its culture. And it was centered in the opera house located in the center of New Prague, pictured here in the lower frame. The opera house was built and it was where plays in Bohemian were given. Uh, the New Prague Symphonic Orchestra played, which is in the photograph above it. And that uh, was directed by Professor Kavajic, whose family hosted the composer Antonin Dvořák in Spillville, Iowa, when Dvořák was in New York as a guest conductor at the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. The ticket office window for that opera house is hanging on the wall. And uh, it stood until the 1970s when it was torn down and then it was the lot was vacated. Another important part of New Prague's culture was the fact that photography, as you can see as you walked around this shed, played a very important role in recording history. We don't often think about the present as important, but as we reflect on the past, if it was not for the photographer taking photographs of the community, both rural and city life, we would be at a loss in understanding the past. One of the earliest photogra photographers had a studio off of Main Street, and he used this chair to pose his subjects. You may have photographs in your family collection. You are part of the past, and your the history that you're making each day is adds to the rich history of the community in which you live. Ponder and think about how the voices that you might hear coming from the field or from the blacksmith shop or the brewery or the candy shop were all important sounds that are, are no longer here. You have to envision them and you make believe and hopefully you can also think about how history lives and how you can create history. Welcome back to our Centennial Cabin in the Park. I wanted to show you some of the latest additions we have to our cabin. First of all, I am carding wool, and this is in preparation for spinning wool that would be used to make socks and mittens and sweaters and whatever was needed. And before me, I have our new spinning wheel. You probably remember our other spinning wheel, which had a wheel that sat higher. This wheel is closer to the floor, and it, it treadles on this side, which is a little different from the other one. But the important thing is that it's a castle spinning wheel. The man who donated, made it, and brought it to um, New Prague was from Bohemia. So this is a Bohemian style of spinning wheel. He made it, disassembled it, and carried it with him on the boat to come to this area. In here I have all the wool which would have been carded and if this would be complete you would see the way the wool was turned on this with the wheel to spin the wool and after it was spun then it would, the yarn would be wrapped on the yarn winder to make it easier to be used in the knitting process. That would be the way to organize the wool. And if you've ever seen your someone knitting, they have a skein of wool and that's where it would be gathered on the yarn winder. Another addition to our cabin 
is this corner cupboard. Now a corner cupboard is made in a shape, the back of it is like a triangle. So it fits into a corner and gives us a lot more space in front of it for all our things that we might want to have in this tiny cabin where we all live together. It gives us all the storage that we would like, but does not take the floor space that a regular cabinet or cupboard would take. We look forward to meeting you again at the cabin when you are able to come visit. Thank you.